Hello everybody, welcome to this tutorial on resampling within Sony Vegas. Now a lot of people have issues with this, with resampling or what Vegas likes to call um, smart resample. And resampling is just a term for changing an input to match an output in a way. So um, resampling would be scaling video from 1080p to 720p or scaling video um, color space from 10-bit to 8-bit or uh, resampling from 48 kilohertz audio to 44.1 kilohertz audio, things like that. That's resampling. So within Sony Vegas, resampling generally is referring to video frame rates. So you record video at 30 frames per second, but you plop it in a project at 29.97. It's going to try and res resample that so it's smoother. But the problem is, is that as humans, we're very sensitive to changes in temporal clarity versus visual clarity. What that means is that when you have ghosting in video, so resampling of frames, that's way more noticeable than resampling of pixels because pixels are, for one thing, they're very small and you generally can't tell. And in, in many ways, you know, if, if you're anti-aliasing in many ways, actually is resampling and it's quote unquote ghosting on a spatial level. So instead of your frames being blurred, um, you have pixels that are basically being blurred together. So instead of going into a huge discussion about temporal and spatial stuff, let's start talking about frames. So in Sony Vegas right here, I have a 1080p project at 30 frames per second. And my video is at 1080p, uh, 1080p, and then the frame is at 30 frames per second. So normally people are going to be using Fraps or um, some other program or whatever. And uh, they're going to drop it into Sony Vegas. And by default, Sony Vegas is at uh, 480p interlaced at 29.97 frames per second. That's not ideal. A, because no one ever in the history of the world should be using interlaced anymore. I think it's a horrible format. It should be made illegal. Secondly, um, it doesn't match your input. So what a lot of people do is don't even investigate and they just render it out and then start complaining that Sony Vegas ruined their video. Um, but they're the ones who didn't double check their project. So there's three frame rates in Sony Vegas. You have your input frame rate, whatever, whatever your video actually is running at. You have your project frame rate, and then you have your, um, frame rate of your output format. So let's first start out with talking about your input. So generally with fraps, generally with fraps, um, you have a choice of frame rates. So you can do 30 or 50 or 60 or whatever. It's, it's up to you, right? By default, it's going to be 29.97, I think, but a lot of people just choose 30 because it's easy. But then when they bring it to Sony Vegas, they forget to change that. And so the Sony Vegas, like I said before, it changes that into 29.97 it does the smart resample which is on by default and then um people complain that it's that's blurry so here's what you do you double check your frame rates now i a lot of times i tell people um you know match your project settings to whatever your video is but then they take that to heart and think that every single time their project has to match whatever their video is it just creates an idea of what you want your frame rate to be so in the case of uh, Motions of War, which is what this footage is from, it's some leftover clips for that, uh, which is very old, actually. You know, if I was thinking about one, this one single idea of my project should match everything I recorded, then I could record, you know, at 15 frames per second, and my project would be 15 frames per second. You have to think about it more universally, okay? Um, for Motions of War, I wanted smooth 30 frames per second video. So I recorded at 60 frames per second and then slow down exactly by half. So that it runs at 30 frames per second. Every frame is, is there. So, um, so you have to think about your input and output and what you want your project to be. If you're shooting something like a cinematic and you want it to be at 24 frames per second, then instead of just recording at 30, record at 24 or record at 48 or 72 or 96 or something. And then, uh, set your project to 24 and then you can you can easily work within those those multiples because if you're working with 24 48 72 you can easily 
turn off resampling and your video will be extremely smooth because it's not dropping and adding frames because they don't match. You don't have to resample in that case. Um, so it, basically Sony Vegas happens because they don't match. Now, if you were to simply disable it uh, in a case where, okay, let's set our frame rate to 24 and uh, if we go frame by frame, well, you'll notice it's it's already frame blending because they're different. It's trying to match them. You'll notice some frames have a lot of blur, some of them don't. You see in this case, there's very little blur, but sometimes they, they have more. It's in, in that case, there's basically no frame blending, almost. Uh, it's, it's really clean. So if we were to go in here, disable resample, it, it's gone. But every fifth frame is taken out and it skips a little bit. So if we were to play this, it would look a little bit skippy. It's not completely perfect. It's pretty good because 30 to 24 actually works pretty well. Um, but in a lot of cases, basically it's removing every fifth frame. And so what happens is you get a gap. Okay, so 30 frames per second video is at 33.3 uh, milliseconds apart, right? But then every fifth frame is going to end up being a 66 millisecond gap, which isn't Perfect. I mean, if, if you have to work with the, what you can, then it's okay. But uh, that little bit of skippiness can be avoided. And here's the thing. People tell me, oh, just don't worry about it. Just disable resampling and everything's fine. But the thing is, it does affect the smoothness of your video. And Vegas is having to do a little bit of math to compute that. It's not as simple as just it's on and off. We're not processing anything. So there is a bit of processing going on in the background to make the frame rates match. So it may actually be faster to make the frame rates match and you may end, you may end up being able to process more files and it actually would process more frames and also the video would process faster. So there's cases where you do want to turn it off and sometimes where you don't necessarily want resampling is what, is what I hope it's clear. What I'm trying to say is that by leaving it on, it tells you where your frame rates don't match. So if you bring a project in, you know, let's say we, bring, we turn this back on. If you bring this in your project and you're finding, wow, this is this is blurry, that should tell you, hey, wait, I should check my project settings. These aren't matching. There's a problem. And it's a way to remind you that your project um, is messed up somehow. So there is an occasion where your frame rates don't match, but also you can turn off um, disable resample without me hating you. And that case is where your frame rates are multiples of each other. So if we set our project to 30 frames per second, and let's go ahead and speed up the video by two. Now what happens is this is actually going to start playing in real time. I have frame blending turned on. This is technically running in real time because this is how the game is actually recorded. But you're getting frame blending because it's going from effectively 60 frames per second to 30. So it's blending every pair of frames together. If we were to turn this off, it would look like regular 30 FPS recorded video. It's very clean and it's very smooth. But here's the thing, because we're going from 60 to 30, it's basically cutting out every other frame. It's very clean, it's very fast, and there's very little overhead. Um, the only problem is you're basically losing half the information that you bothered to record, which isn't always that big of a problem. Let's go and stop that and play it. So the loop. So this is a perfectly fine occasion where you might want to turn off frame blending because if you're ex if you're exporting for YouTube, you well 60 f is 60 fps is not going to show up. A uh, your file is going to be much larger. It's going to take much longer to uh, encode, um, and it's just there's no point to it. So uh, you may want to go ahead and do it to 30 frames per second. This is a perfectly fine occasion to do that. If you're recording at 72 frames per second or 96 frames per second, and then your project is 24, you can also turn off um, resample in that case because your frame rates basically just fit into each other. If, they're, if you're going from 96 frames per second to 24, it's going to take out, um, it's only going to keep every fourth frame and discard the rest. Now, granted, you're losing a lot of visual information that way, but your video is going to be smooth your video is going to encode very fast and your file is going to look very clear. So that, that, that is a, a perfect occasion for that. Now, um, even after all these fixes, there's cases where people will tell me, hey, uh, I did everything you said, but my video is still blurry. 
what you have to keep in mind, okay, so our project is 30 frames per second right here. Um, because I'll, I tell them, you know, um, you want to leave that on. So let's, let's set everything back to normal. So we're at 30 frames per second again. And we have resample on, but because the frame rates match, everything's really clear, okay? But if we were going to, if we were going to uh, render this video, let's go to um, eight megabits per second, uh, 1080p with Windows Media, it's a preset because a lot of people don't bother making their own presets, so they just choose one. So this is a preset, I haven't changed it at all, I just um, favorited it so I can find it. Let's go to Customize Template and figure out what the problem is going to be. So your video project is 30 frames per second. You have resampling turned on, and your video is at 30 frames per second. Even though your preview looked clear, the problem is that your frame rate is going to change to 29.97. And because resampling is turned on on that video clip, it's going to resample to 29.97. Even though your project settings were correct because your frame rate in the output module, basically, I'm thinking in terms of After Effects, overrides your project. So if I were to set this video right here to, I don't know, 640 by 480, your video is going to be 640 by 480, even though your project is 1080p, because your whatever your export settings are overrides your project. Okay, so um, you have to make sure these match. So if you set this to 30, set this to 1080p, this is going to look pristine. It's going to be exactly the way it looks in your project window besides you know regular compression artifacts so that's something to keep in mind make sure your input frame rate or keep be aware of your input frame rate your project frame rate and your export frame rate if all those are aligned you will be golden for um your project and you'll have no issues with um resampling or anything there is one special occasion uh well actually two there's two special occasions where if your frame rates match, you'll still get resampling. One is that if you're doing, um, if you're inputting video from another program, there's a certain case where your video actually will have a cut in between frames. So let's say your video, see Vegas cuts in between frames. Um, so I can't split it before time, but there's cases where your video will actually cut off right here so this is frame zero and frame one. Okay, sometimes it'll be there. So when this is butted up against the left side of your project, basically every frame is offset by half the time. It's very hard to explain um, without an example. But basically in that case, all your entire video is offset by half the frame. So if you're at 30 frames per second, that's 33 milliseconds. But half of that would be 16. So all your frames are offset. So it's resampling everything when it shouldn't have to. So all I recommend you do is you're, if you're seeing frame blending, even though you checked everything, just go to the beginning of your timeline, very beginning, cut it off by a few frames, and then drag it to the beginning and everything should be fine. Because then it's going to the nearest exact frame and it's being aligned. The second occasion is where you're doing speed changes. So this video is um, resampling's turned on, okay? Smart resampling, but the video is clear. There's no resampling here, okay? But if I were to say increase the speed a little bit, just by you know a few percentage points, let's make it 1.2 or something. You'll see frame blending because the internal frame rate is now from 30 to say uh, 35 or 36 or something. Um, actually, yeah, I think it's 36. So this is a case where you're going to get frame blending. It's difficult to avoid, um, without just disabling it. So there's cases where you may want to disable it for very specific clips to make things clean, because if you're doing speed changes, um, a lot of times people can't notice the fluidity difference where, um, say you're going from 30 frames per second effectively to 45 when you're uh, when you're rendering there's a case where that speed change the the influence of the speed change is more so than the fluidity change of having um your frame rates out of sync so it might be worthwhile just to disable that make sure the video is clear even though you're going to get duplicated and dropped frames so that's an occasion where you may want to um 
you know, take liberty with that option. So um, that's all I have for you. Thanks for watching. This is part of a new series of videos I want to do. Nothing, don't think of it as like, oh my God, he's launching a new series of videos. Oh my God. All, all I'm trying to do is um, do these specialized tutorial videos. Um, don't expect me to do, you know, beginner's guide to Sony Vegas. That is something I've thought about, but don't think of it. I don't want to do very general videos because there's many other resources for that. And it might not be worth my time. I'd like to do videos that perhaps are more specialized that I can explain perhaps a little bit better that I think people need to know about. That's something I'm interested in doing. So if you have an idea for something about Sony Vegas or Adobe After Effects or maybe Photoshop or um, encoding or something technical like that, let me know and I'll try to put together a video um, for that because there's a good chance a lot of other people want to know that as well. If it's something too generalized, I just wonder why you haven't gone somewhere else because again, there's a lot of people that produce video tutorials for all sorts of things. I'd like to be able to produce something more specific that might help me um, uh, get kind of specialized traffic, I guess you could say. Anyways, that's all for now. Uh, thanks for watching, and let me know what you want to see. And I will talk to you later. Bye.